At last night of the proms, people will be singing the controversial song Rule Britannia, but you won't hear the word slaves. What you'll hear is Britain's never, never, never shall be Smurfs. They'll be singing slaves, but it'll sound like Smurfs because they'll be wearing face masks. From the Hollywood scriptwriter Ken Levine. Ken, can we talk about something the LA Times called an epic blog fight? Here's what happened. First of all, I've had a blog for 15 years. Great blog, called too. Called buykenlevine.com. Read my blog and listen to my podcast, Hollywood and Levine. Shameless plug. There was an article in New York Magazine, supposedly written by Roseanne Barr. And I say supposedly because it was w- way more articulate than she ever was. <laughs> and she's complaining in the article about Roseanne and how they ripped her off and that the creator, Matt Williams, took credit for it. And it was her show. And she just, woe is me, woe is me. Anytime an article like that comes out, I will get readers to my blog commenting asking me my thoughts on yeah. it. And I read the article, which I thought was just just a piece of shit. <laughs> and so I wrote articles saying, the show is called Roseanne. <laughs> okay? How is she not getting credit? <laughs> the show is called Roseanne. She owns a major part of it. She's the major creative force on the show. She's starring in a show called Roseanne. And the fact that Matt Williams took undisciplined stand-up material and shaped it into an actual television series, an actual pilot that worked, he's entitled to creator credit. Yeah. He's very much entitled to creator credit. And then I talked about having known a lot of writers who have worked on the show, how absolutely horrid she was to writers. They would go through writers. It was just a revolving door. She didn't bother to learn their names. They would come down for a run through and they would have to wear signs around their necks with numbers. Okay. Okay. That's the regard that, that she had for writers. Women writers she treated just as badly or worse. So I write this in my, my blog post. She had a blog at the time, finds out about it, and writes just this scathing. It's like Donald Trump wrote a whole <laughs> blog post. Okay. Assuming Donald Trump <laughs> could write a whole blog post. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Just insane ramblings <laughs> from a mad woman. Attacking you directly? Oh, attacking me personally. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Attacking me personally and saying how I was terrible to writers and I was terrible to women writers. And, and where'd she get that info from? Where does Trump get his info? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pulls it out of her ass, okay? Right. <laughs> it's like none of it was true. Yeah. So I read this and, and I go, I'm not going to get into a, a, a shouting match with Roseanne. I said, I, I just, you know, forget it. But a lot of women writers who worked on shows that I was producing, all wrote letters, you know, jumping to my defense, to my blog. Ken served as a mentor to me when I had my baby. Ken let me go home at six o'clock every night so that I could, you know, feed the baby and put my baby to sleep, et cetera, et cetera. We did the show Almost Perfect, and it was me and David Isaacs and Robin Schiff. So we had a a woman who was a third partner. Uh, We brought her into our partnership. So, so I said, I'm not going to get into, you know, just a verbal debate, but here are what women writers 
have said. And, and like one of them had worked on Roseanne and talked about how, you know, Ken was, was great. And he was a mentor and he, you know, never came on to us and there was no sexual harassment or anything like that. And, and Roseanne was Auschwitz. So uh, (laughs) (laughs) words to that effect. Okay. Okay. So that sparked another just long, insane rant and, and all of her, you know, minions, idiots, you know, wearing their future MAGA hats. Yeah, he's stupid. He's an asshat. You, you know, I, I like, okay. And at that point, I, I just, I wrote in the blog, like, I, I, like, I'm done. Good luck with you. I'm done. And the LA Times picked up on it. I think the USA Today also picked up on it. And it sort of became this story. I think it's on my IMDb page. I think there's... <laughs> it's they, on Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. That's where I saw it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So uh, so it was never resolved. It's still an ongoing thing then. It's just, it's like it's like North and South Korea. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way, Graham. When she was going to do her comeback series, yeah. I was not asked to join the writing staff. <laughs> oh, how about that? Yeah. Yeah. If you're one of the young people who got your A-level results this week and they weren't what you hoped for, look, it's not the end of the world. It just means there's a fair chance that you'll end up in a career that involves repeating one of these two phrases. Would you like fries with that? Or the UK's number one hit music station. BJ Shea is my special guest this week. You know, BJ, the last time you and I saw each other in person was way back in 2012. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, it was the uh, the talk show boot camp in New Orleans was the last oh. time you and I were together in the same room. Oh, yeah. I have, and, and that might have been the last time I did a talk show boot camp. I don't do those anymore. I'll go, I'll go to the morning show ones, but not the talk show ones anymore. It's, I don't really do much of a talk show anymore, I guess. So we, I really wasn't getting a whole lot out of it. And, uh, and honestly, my attitude was pretty negative listening to some of the philosophy thrown my way. I think now, uh, upon further reflection, it had more to do with me than them. Um, yeah, but that's, I think that might have been the last time I went. Really? Yeah, I yeah. was there. I was invited there. I was on a panel. I was on a panel called The Rising, Rising Stars, mm. the show that have talk radio buzzing. Um, I think I remember that, yes. Yeah. Uh, my, my memory of that was... I think it was the second night you and I went out to dinner with a New Zealander. And to my great shame, I can't remember his first name. His last name was Van Dyke, and he was programming a talk station in New Zealand. Remember him? I believe I do. Yeah. Uh, But I can't remember his first name either. We we got to the end of the meal, and you said, well, do you want to hit the strip clubs now? And I said, said, that's not really my thing. Oh, well... And this guy from New Zealand said, have you ever been to a strip club with, with BJ? I said, no, I've never been to a strip club. I said, it's just not my thing. And he says, oh, no, he, he, we were there last night and BJ made the stripper cry. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds like my M.O. I uh, I end up having more of a father daughter. Well, I don't know if I was. There. Well, it could have been a father daughter moment. And then they, you know, it gets more like a therapy session, uh, which I don't know if that's good for either one of us, really. But Well, what was it tipped her over the edge? Oh, my gosh. First of all, you're asking me to remember eight years ago. OK, OK. Yeah, sure. uh, eight minutes ago. I'll tell you right now. It was a bit of a challenge. <laughs> but I feel probably. Uh, you know, it could have been a personal issue. Somehow, some way I had, I just had this way of seeing into people. I felt, here's my thing about going to, and I haven't been, I, that might have been the last time I went to a strip club. I can't remember the last time I was at one. Um, but I felt bad just observing without like making a connection, without knowing. It's like, I, I just felt like I want to give something back. And then, but the trouble is, is it usually goes a little too deep trying to get to know her and next thing you know she's in tears talking about a family member she doesn't get along with uh and and then that 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 sort of has been my interaction with a lot of a lot of people mostly women when i would talk with them i, I would get a little i guess i would get a little too non-surface i don't make small talk very well i really 
go right, go right for the gusto. <laughs> and, just go, and next thing you know, water works everywhere. Um, and I did get a bit of a reputation, like, oh, you've got to go to a, you got to go anywhere with him. It's not a typical moment. Uh, not too many people can, you know, you can get a stripper angry by not paying her or insulting her, but making a stripper cry, that's a, and you know, that's a whole different level. That <laughs> probably, that's what makes you unique, BJ. That's is what, that what we, it is. Yeah, it was one of the things, one of the many things. Yeah.